Hello friends, welcome to Unity Physics System video tutorials series. From the past few video tutorials, we are trying to understand colliders in Unity. We know that collider is an invisible shape used to handle collisions between game objects. We know that there are six 3D colliders, box collider, sphere collider, capsule collider, mesh collider, wheel collider and terrain collider. We understood the box collider. We know that box collider is a collider which comes in a box shape. Box collider can be used to wrap any box shape game object like wall, door, ground etc. Then we understood the sphere collider. Sphere collider is a collider which comes in a spherical shape. Sphere Collider can be used to wrap any spherical shape game object like ball, planet, moon, sun, fruits, vegetables, marbles, etc. In this video tutorial, I would like to discuss the Capsule Collider. Capsule Collider is a collider which comes in a capsule shape. Capsule Collider can be used to wrap any capsule or cylindrical shape game object like tube, rod, gas plant, pillar, etc, etc. Capsule Collider is a collider which comes in a capsule shape, guys. Capsule Collider can be used to wrap any capsule or cylindrical shape game object. Let me go to Unity. I go to Game Object menu, say 3D object, say Capsule. Let me reset its position and press the F key to focus on it. You can see that Capsule Game Object is created and Unity automatically added Capsule Collider to the Capsule Game Object, you can see that. I go to Game Object menu, say 3D Object, say Cylinder. You can see that I have created a Cylinder Game Object. To the Cylinder Game Object also, Unity automatically added Capsule Collider. So, Capsule Collider is a collider which comes in a capsule shape, guys. It comes in a capsule shape which can be used to wrap any capsule shape game object or cylindrical shape game object like rod, pillar or gas plants etc etc. I delete this cylinder game object. We have now only the capsule game object here. Okay. Let's understand the various properties of the capsule collider. The first property we have is direction. Direction indicates the orientation of Capsule Collider. Direction indicates the orientation of Capsule Collider. Here we have direction. At present, it is set to Y axis. If I change it to X axis, you can see that the Capsule Collider is placed along the X axis. If I say here Z axis, you can see that Capsule Collider is oriented along the Z axis. So, if required, you can definitely change the orientation or the direction of the capsule collider, guys. Next property we have is height. Height indicates height of the capsule collider. If required, you can definitely change the height of the capsule collider, guys. You can increase or decrease, right, with the help of height property. Next, we have radius property. Radius indicates radius of the capsule collider. It is used to change the thickness of the capsule collider, guys. You can see we have here radius property. If I drag it, you can see that we are increasing the thickness. If we want, we can decrease the thickness with the help of the radius property. Okay. Let me reset everything by going to the three dots and say reset. Next property we have is center. Center indicates offset of the collider from the center of the game object. If you want, you can offset the collider from the center of the game object with the help of center property. You can see if I drag the X label, you can see that we are shifting or offsetting the collider in the X axis. We can offset the collider in the Y axis. We can offset the collider in the Z axis also. Let me reset everything back to zero here. So if required, you can definitely offset the collider guys with the help of center property. Next, we have the Edit Collider tool. Edit Collider tool enables 
control points for changing the size of the collider. Using the edit collider tool, what you can do is you can visually change the size of the collider. That means you can visually change the height and the radius of the collider guys. Let's see that. Here we have edit collider tool guys. If I click on it and disable the mesh renderer, you can see that we get some control points here, right? If I click and hold down the alt and drag, we are able to change the radius here. You can see that, right? If I click and hold left mouse button and hold down the alt and drag, you can see that we are able to change the height here, right? So visually we can control the size of the collider with the help of edit collider tool. If I disable it, you can see now we don't see the control points. Okay. Now we are able to understand direction property, height property, radius property, center property and edit collider tool. Next property we have is material. Material indicates physique material of a game object or physics material of a game object. Physique material determines or indicates how a collider must behave in the physical world. Physic material indicates whether a game object should behave like it is made of a rubber, plastic, wood, stone, metal, glass or ice etc etc guys. Let me go to Unity. I am going to reset everything here and then I render the mesh. I say game object, 3D object, cube and then I scale it in X axis by 10. I scale it in Z axis by 10 and then I rotate it around Z axis by minus 20 degrees and then I hold the capsule and move it up. Okay. Let's move it more up and move it uh, left side. Okay. So now we have here the capsule as well as the cube. So cube is a ground. Let me rename it to ground. Okay. G R O U N D ground. Okay. Now we have capsule here. You can see I have some physique uh, materials. Okay, we are going to discuss about physics materials in detail in the upcoming video tutorials. So these materials uh, determine or indicate how a game object should behave in the physical world. Okay, now what I do, I am going to drag the metal physics material to the material property of the capsule here. Now what happens, our capsule is going to behave like it is made of a metal. When a metal object falls on the ground, how it interacts that is the way how the capsule interacts now so i'm going to add one rigid body component here add component physics and say rigid body and then i click on the play button you see that it is going to fall down like a metal and uh, just slides down you can see that it's behaving like a metal how the metal behaves when it falls down on the ground okay let's replace this capsule uh, material with the rubber now rubber is going to have more friction as well as it is going to have a little bouncy feature, right? So when I click on the play button, you see that it is going to fall down. It finds a little bounciness and then it slides down slowly because it has more friction, right? Okay. Let me stop it. Now let's add this bouncy physique material. Now our capsule is going to bounce more guys. If I click on the play button, when it falls down, it bounces see it's bouncing more you can see that so that's what the physique material indicates physique material indicates whether a game object should behave like it is made of a rubber plastic wood stone metal glass ice etc etc guys i hope you guys have clearly understood what is physique material in the upcoming video tutorials we are going to discuss more about uh, the physique materials guys how do we create ourselves physique materials etc etc Next property we have is Ease Trigger. Ease Trigger converts the collider into a trigger. Ease Trigger converts the collider into a trigger. Then what is the difference between a collider and a trigger? Trigger indicates non-solid volume whereas collider indicates solid volume. Trigger indicates non-solid volume or non-solid object whereas Collider indicates solid volume or solid object. Of course, two solid objects never intersect, right? One solid object does not allow other solid object to enter, right? Whereas 
non solid volume like liquid gas vacuum they allow other object to enter inside right so that is the difference between the trigger and the collider if you want to create the solid volume then you go for collider if you want to create a non solid volume like liquid gas etc you take help of the trigger guys trigger is used to create a volume or a space which senses and triggers events when some game object enters stays or exits that particular space that means the trigger allows you to create a volume or a space in which other game object can enter stay or exit from that space for example you, when you want to create a magic portal or a danger zone or a water pool or a security room you take help of the trigger guys let me explain it little bit more clearly i am going to select this ground and um, rotate it around z axis back to 0 okay let's uh, place the capsule at 0 in the x axis in the y axis i say here 2 or 1.5 i think it stays on the ground and i push it back okay that's good now consider this capsule is the player i say name player i am going to create one material here i select the materials folder i right click and say create and then i say material i name this as uh, m underscore ground g r o u n d and i change its color to black and i assign it to the ground okay so we have two types of material one is the normal material with shader which allows us to define the look and feel of the game object and the physic material allows us to define how the game object behaves in the physical world okay next uh, i am going to say game object 3d object cylinder you can see that i have created a cylinder here and then i am going to increase its size here i say here 3 by 3 and i say 5 so consider this is going to be a magic portal okay when the player enters this portal he is going to navigate to some other level or maybe some other location in the same level guys so how do we create the portal the magic portal okay so you can see that this cylinder okay let me rename it to magic portal m a g i c m a g i c magic p o r t a l so magic portal okay now let's take the player and uh, place it just above the portal okay i am going to place it just above the portal here and if i click on the play button it just falls on the magic portal and just jumps and falls down it is not passing through that portal right you can see that it's just falling down bouncing up and going away why because magic portal has the capsule collider as well as our player also has the capsule collider so if i take the magic portal and I set the capsule collider is trigger enabled. Now what happens this magic portal is going to convert into a trigger area understanding through which a player can pass through guys. So you can see I am going to create one more material I say here create the material I say here m underscore magic portal p o r t a l portal and I set its color to somewhat like bluish color and I change the fade let me set this to the magic portal okay that's a blue color and then i reduce the alpha value so that we can see that our capsule or the player is passing through that okay if i click on the play button now the player is going to pass through that portal guys right understanding and it is bouncy so it is uh, bouncing because we have the physic material applied the bouncy physic material right if i take it and change it to like a metal or something and play it just um, falls down right so when player enters inside this we are going to write some code and make the player to navigate to some other location in the game level or in some other level itself guys okay so that's uh, all about the capsule collider i hope you guys have clearly understood the direction property height property radius property the center property uh, material e trigger edit collider tool right that's it guys for this video tutorial i hope you guys have clearly understood i suggest you people to try it yourself i suggest you to explore more okay 
more examples of capsule collider in the upcoming video tutorials we are going to discuss more about colliders the physics system etc if you like this video hit the like button and share with your friends so that everyone will get benefited for more benefits and be up to date do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel keep learning keep gaming keep sharing thank you guys thank you very much see you in the next tutorial